The Birthmark by Nathaniel Hawthorne. Hawthorne is one of my all-time favorite authors, and if any of you badmouth him, you will fail my class because he is wonderful. All right, this is one of his short stories. It's one of the better short stories as well. I won't make you read any of the really, really long ones like the Celestial Railroad. That's, that's a toughie. All right, it starts off with a man named Aylmer. Aylmer marries a really beautiful woman named Georgiana. Aylmer and Georgiana are perfect. Aylmer is the man of science. He is a brilliant scientist who is passionate about science. He's strong, he's intelligent, and he has nobility and morality in his learning. Georgina, on the other hand, is a creature of nature. She is naturally beautiful. She is kind, she is loving, she is soft and tender. Together, these two people should be the epiphany of happiness, but they can't be because of Aylmer's undying ambition and devotion to science and because of Georgiana's undying devotion to her husband. Aylmer notices for some reason it took him until they got married to notice, she has a very tiny birthmark on her cheek. Every other man who has ever beheld Georgina, Georgiana thinks that this makes her one of the most lovely, beautiful, graceful creatures on the planet. It's as though some imp imprinted his hand upon her. Or in a way, it's just a really pretty little birthmark. It's one teeny tiny flaw on an otherwise perfect human being. And the majority of us actually like those teeny tiny flaws on perfect human beings. Perfection is boring, and it's kind of creepy and weird, to be honest with you. But Aylmer doesn't see perfection as creepy and weird. As a matter of fact, Georgiana hits, her, hits that right on the head when she says, it's not about perfection. It's about the strive and the quest for perfection that you're after, and I can't live through this. So he says to her, maybe we can get rid of the birthmark. And she says, wow, I've never really considered getting rid of the birthmark. But if you want to get rid of it, okay, I'll give it a try. So he makes concoction after concoction after concoction to give her to get rid of this birthmark. Unfortunately, nothing ever makes it go away. And it becomes this struggle, not of Georgiana's birthmark versus her husband, but actually science versus nature. And this is why we know it's an American story, because Almer breaks rules. And in American Gothic literature, if you break rules, you got to pay for it. You can't sin against the community, and you can't sin against nature. Almer is sinning against nature. He's decided that he can be stronger than nature, when we know in American literature and in American history, we've been proven, no we cannot, the frontier is stronger than we are. That's the whole backbone of the American literary movement. And Hawthorne really knew that very well. He's using that idea inside the short story to show when Almer finally gives Georgiana that last concoction, she drinks it, she finally has that thing fade off, and then she dies in the next section. That's called a sacrificed quarterback play. It's most famously done in Jaws Wheaton's um, Dr. Horrible sing-along blog. The main character, the protagonist, gets what he wants. He got that birthmark off her face, but he gets it at the worst possible cost that he could have. He loses the girl. In Dr. Horrible's sing-along blog, Dr. Horrible manages to, you know, get Doc Captain Hammer out of his way, but he loses Penny, or she otherwise known, what's her face? Now we want to think of how Poe and Hawthorne write together. They don't sit down and write together. Ha ha ha. They actually write kind of in opposite ways. We did determine that they're both American authors, but they're both very different types of authors. Where Hawthorne really wants you to know that nature is stronger, Poe has a Strange way of telling you, nature is actually a little evil. Hawthorne thought nature was perfect and fine. Hawthorne wanted you to understand that nature, while it's stronger, is probably smarter as well. It gave Georgiana that beautiful little birthmark so that somebody who was perfect didn't have to walk around being perfect. She had that one cute, adorable little flaw that made her lovable. Not about perfect, it's about being lovable. Poe, on the other hand, gives you a house covered in slime and that slime slowly eats away at the house. That's nature overcoming humanity. That's not because nature and humanity were better or, or stronger. It's that nature was actually punishing what we might have determined was a bad family. So, two very different writers, but are they writing in similar ways? Yeah, absolutely. As a matter of fact, Poe steals Hawthorne's word, phantasmagoric. I hate the word too, it's weird. It simply just means something that's pretty natural, and that's what we use for the term as well. 
Are there both preternatural examples in this? Yeah, of course. Edgar Allan Poe gives us twins. He also gives us slime all over the house that manages to grow all over the house without actually destroying the house. And then, of course, he gives us the supernatural. The house is swallowed by the earth. Weird. We have a preternatural obsession and knowledge with science in Hawthorne. We also have a preternatural obsession and love of a husband in Georgiana. And we have a preternatural beauty and naturalness with Georgiana as well. So, they're really very similar writers. All right. As far as setting goes, you tell me. Are they similar at all? We have Hawthorne. We never really know where he is. He's inside a house operating on his wife. Poe. They're inside an isolated cabin. There's a huge tempest outside during the final scene. In Hawthorne, I never really got that there was a huge tempest. Hawthorne's not a fan of metonymies. And a metonymy is simply when the weather reflects how someone feels. If it's raining, someone's sad. If it's sunny, someone's happy. There you go. All right, I hope this helped. Drop me an email if you're having any troubles. adonahue at hwrsc.org. Don't text and drive.